What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Shaka. Oh, I got my sweater choked up. It's not that. It's really not that cold outside today. But you know, cut all this hair off is a little cold for me. But we are back at it again with a part three video for a white girl over here. So let's get into that. here don't mind it it's a, it's a mess but um yeah got some stuff laid out already here oh, 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 tripping over my tire this is weighing this down for all this one yeah shout out to my neighbor for the rocks <laughs> but um yeah finally got the cng lines out after you know years well i shouldn't say years but a couple of months um, I throw up a video of all the stuff that I had before I stopped working on this and you know anyways here's that what's going on everybody it's Father's Day how are everybody doing today happy Father's Day to all the sorry I'm trying to fix my glove here happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there that really stick by their child their children's and you know I don't know, teach them their ropes, teach them their ways, you know. I want to give a shout out to my stepdad. Uh, he's been with my mom for like 13, maybe 14, 15 years. I don't, I don't really don't know. They, they've been together for a while, for a while now. <laughs> but I want to give a shout out to him because he's been the biggest motivation and uh, role model in my life that really showed me and taught me how to become a man. I don't know my real father. He's just a sperm donor, that's all he is. And that's all I ever know him for. But back to y'all uh, on a real note, we are here with white girl again. Because this is, I don't know, this is probably video number three, I think. I wanna say it's video number three, maybe two. Well, f I'll figure that out. I already seen that we took out the trunk. Nothing in there. We have to do a little bit of um, bolting inside the engine bay here. So that way we can take out the fuel regulator and all the lines that go along with that. And then you can take out the intake. And get cracking. <laughs> wow, it's really hot. Sun beating on me. Go back underneath the shade real quick. But that's why I'm not gonna time lapse this because I don't have an area that I can put my phone at. It's just gonna be in a bad spot. So I'll show y'all when I get something pulled off. <laughs> Later. Look at this weird thing I just found. Them cars like teed off at the main. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I'm just flying out of here. The main two radiator hoses, I mean the helical hoses, there's two T's that go straight to the fuel pressure regulator. And that's right there in the corner. That runs out this way into the fuel oil line. Then they have this big ass, I don't even know. So, there's all that fun stuff with these CNG cars here. It is hot as hell. I am sweating. But yeah. So I'm gonna get back at it. Start taking rest of the hoses out, draining it, probably pump, jack up the car, send the front jacked up to get underneath it, spray it down some more because, you know, more and more spiders, 
Anybody knows a real good way to, sorry that it's so shaky. Anybody knows a real good way to get rid of uh, spiders? Please let me know in the comments. I heard like peppermint works. We'll see about that. But if that doesn't work, let me know. <laughs> Buddy, uh, it's the next day because had a lot of stuff to do uh, for Father's Day. Uh, spend time with my dad and you know I couldn't really get to what I had to do in the car but I lifted it up in the front I did drop down the subframe because uh, I dropped down the subframe a little bit so I can get these lines to get out from there but if I can't get it to come out then that means I might have to cut it which I don't want to do because you know what I mean Stock gas lines for this car. No, I don't know. I just didn't want to cut it. I mean, I just did. I just didn't want to do the cutting because I kind of wanted to sell it all together. I mean, if anybody needs parts for a CNG, and you know, I have it here. But. So y'all see that, right? So yeah, that was all the stuff that I was doing to this car until um, I got to the point where you know I ended up buying this, you know, pop up garage here. This, getting her set up in here on jack stands and dropping the subframe so i can actually remove the gas lines so i i end up doing that so my first thing that i'm going to be doing with this car because like i said this is a cng uh vehicle if you don't believe me just these were the gas lines that were on this car cng yeah now i'm saying it says caution <laughs> but yeah or an NGV, if you will, but it is a CNG vehicle. I'm not confident on what steps to take exactly which way to, you know, try to guide you guys and guide myself on this. But little by little, I'll show you everything that I'm doing here. Um, yeah. So everybody keeps uh, pressure, uh, wow. pressuring me and, and, and questioning me um, that how I'm going to run this motor um off of regular gas because it's gonna make more compression i did a couple of compression calculators on you know off of uh, the uh, dseries.org page um and they all came around to like 13 13 to one compression to 13.3 to one compression some something around there like like it was like 13 to 14 to one compression like yeah it's high but bro at the end of the day like if it needs to tune it needs to tune and if if it does you know what i mean i can't run it the way i want to run it i'm gonna figure that out down the road but i do have another motor that i can just throw into here if i if need be yeah i had to drop the whole damn subframe and to drop these cng lines disconnect the whole steering column I uh, strapped my steering wheel to with the seatbelt. You know, it's a little trick to keep your steering wheel straight. Um, uh, I had to drop the side, the passenger, I mean, driver side strut for the simple fact that my bolt here on the uh, lower control arm is seized up. So I might have to replace this whole lower control arm, which I mean, I already knew I had to do all that. So it's not really any news to me but it's news to you guys cleaned out the car of all the cng parts um yeah just a refract if anybody that's just catching on to this this is the back of this uh 2000 honda civic here that had the cng tank uh was sitting literally right right there in the back and i mean i'll show you all the components or you can just uh, look at the old videos of me taking it out because that's more in detail um oh she's she's it i still got some lines down here that i gotta take off uh, i didn't see but you see those two lines right there yeah i didn't take those out but just just it's just funny how it has the stock like um a fuel pump cover for like a regular gas tank just sitting here a lot of i got a lot of fixing up and doing to this but yeah let me go show you guys all the parts that i have collected over the cumulants of months and saving up and whatnot um yeah there's the gas line right there for the actual 
gas, you know. I'm also not gonna be running the ABS system. I don't think you guys can see that down there, but um, yeah, I don't think I'm, I'm gonna need that because what I'm putting on here is all the stuff from Shadow. I was gonna throw it onto Beastie, but I'd rather just throw it onto this car because I have it here now and I can just fix this car up now. So, you know, why the hell not? <laughs> but let me go show you guys the rest of the CNG parts that are chilling over here by the shed. Yeah, those are the brackets that uh, held the tank. Uh, that's the fuel regulation that was inside the engine bay. Uh, that was like part of the fuel neck system that went to the tank. And that plate right there where that one hole that's in the back, that's where that sat at. And then that side went to the tank. Yeah, weird. And that was a, uh, um, wow. Fuel pressurized regulator. Yeah, I don't know the technical name for these parts, but yeah, that was part of it. But yeah, and there's the two lines that it took me forever to take out, but I finally got them out now. And over here, you know, because my yard is so damn big, but this is some of the new stuff that is going to be going in to a uh, white girl. We got some max. Oh no, they're not even max speed rod. They're JDM speed. <laughs> Uh, some eBay coilovers. Um, shout out to my cousin Alex. You the goat, bro. That ass. He uh, he bought those for me. He was just like, yo, bro, you know, you've been helping me out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you these coilovers, you know what I mean? My gift to you. I was like, that ass. <laughs> Cry. Nah, I'm stop. But nah, that ass. Shout out to him for uh, doing that because now I don't have to actually pay for a suspension and figure out what I was gonna do with it. I have. Suspension that I can throw on and mitch match with the rest of the suspension that I have downstairs to show you right here Well with those I can um, Mix those up and put those however. I want Exactly how I want the car to be set up on what springs and stuff I don't know yet if these are gonna be good enough or not I don't know but just in case if I need to change the springs I have extra in other struts but for right now I'm going to be carrying all this stuff, putting it over there, and get started. So, I'll be right back. We are back at it again. Um, opened it up because, you know, sun is out. It's all nice and shiny out here. Um, right now, I am removing the upper control arms and the struts. So, I can just drop the whole subframe. I already removed the axle nuts. Um... GoPro's on half percent of battery, which is okay because got another battery. Just just because all this in there is just mad corroded looking. And I don't want to deal with any of this. I mean I know the axles are fine because like I said, 49 48, 49,000 miles on this car. Yeah. Um, but these brake calibers, I don't want to deal with it. Um, my problem now is that I see that I have this broken line here this messed up line here so that kind of scars me but um yeah i have to detach all this stuff inside of here first too before i even think about dropping this but um yeah i'm gonna go get to that probably put you guys on a little time lapse for that uh because i don't have really much time uh i might come back and doing this because i had to go pick up the wife in like an hour all right 45 minutes I should say get a quick time lapse of 45 minutes to see where I get and then I'll go pick her up and I'll probably get back to this because it's nice outside and I'd rather be out here than uh, in the basement trying to build this uh, Y8 motor today um yeah but I'll do that later on today but yeah it's it's going um yeah I just stuffed all the stuff into her that she needs you know all the stuff is gonna go on so like, like like I'm saying, like I hope this car should drive like 20 times better than what she was doing before. Everything on here, the lower control arms, the uh, um, inner and outer tie rods are like stiff. So it's like, I'm not gonna take the damn whole rack and pinion out of it just to change that or just take out the uh, tie rods to put it on that. So I was like, you know what? I'll just throw this whole thing in there. Why not? I mean, it already has the power steering pump aligned on it and everything. You know, I, I can't. It, 
it's 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 a win-win for me like as soon as i throw this in i can throw that in and front suspension and i have that done then i can worry about uh gasoline problems and all that other stuff but uh yeah that seems like what's the plan for today um i'm gonna try to see if i can get as far as uh actually replacing the subframes and putting in the new gas lines and the gas tank so hopefully i can give you guys enough good content on that so i'll get to that y'all catch uh well catch it on the time lapse i'll be right back Sorry about the camera angle, probably not the best from being all the way down there, but uh, yeah, at least I can see everything. this <laughs> pick up the wife right now and yeah all right and we are back i got uh i went to go pick up my wife now i'm back home back at it again it's windy as hell so i closed it up um and i started back on because it's getting cold but uh yeah, I'm just in the process of removing the wire harness out of my way. I'm just trying to detach the whole wire harness from the motor because I do not need it. Which I think I have the majority of it unplugged. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get a flathead 
and a Phillips screwdriver. It's tied to like it's on that just for Alright, got my uh, uh screwdriver drivers. I was over here trying to pick up something, trying to unplug something that I can barely reach. Boy, <laughs> yo, the whole, the whole, the whole thing from the starter just broke up, like all of it. I don't know, y'all can see that right there, but it's gone. So, nine in the starter. <laughs> That is the whole wire finish from the CNG, which I will not be needing anymore. So now I gotta go on the inside of the car, take that out. Can you believe we can fill this car up with this? This is where the gas would enter. Well, I gotta do some clipping and some solder into this uh, wire harness here because when these clips are broken. I didn't realize that before, but I do know that now. I want to show you guys something that I found a little different in this car's ECU. So, this is a P2P uh, P ECU, as you can see there. Right? This is a PDN ECU, made in Japan. Um, yeah, I have no info on this. So if anybody ever seen a PDN ECU, y'all let me know in the comments. Are they any good? Like, can I reuse this? Should I use this instead of this PTP? 
I don't know. I'm gonna go use this because with my knowledge, which I'm not saying I have all the knowledge in the world, but with my knowledge, I feel like I'm better off using this than using this that came with the CNG. Just because I kind of want to use this, just because it says made in Japan, but that's the fanboy in me. But honestly, the mechanic in me is telling me that I should just use the P2P. For the simple fact that the wire harness might hook up to this, I didn't, and that's another thing too. I didn't really check if they are exactly the same. If y'all can, like, pause that real quick if y'all want to see that. But yeah, all the pins actually match up. That's pretty cool. So I can use this, and that means I would have to leave the cruise control and all that stuff. That's why I don't want to do. This doesn't have none of that. So that's something I'm gonna go with this. But good fun, good fun. Give me a second. All right, better view what I'm doing from the inside. I don't know why I didn't think of this earlier. problem and it's on the other side of the car so <laughs> I'm gonna take that out and I'll be right back uh, so let me show you what's the problem because I know you hear that so I go and take out I'll come over here, come figure out that, you know, the AC line is like directly bolted into that. 
I am planning on running AC in this car because it's too hot. Just so that it didn't blow in my face and just letting it air out nice and slowly. And yeah. Huh? I think it finished. Oh man. I just noticed too. I'm at 14% with this GoPro. So, you know, not much, much, much recording I'm about to do here. Oh, oh. That shit was not done. Why'd you stop like that? Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that played me. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I guess this is just going to be uh, part three of white girl here. Um, I'm going to stop the video here. I'm going to continue to keep on working on her for the next video. But I feel like this is a good spot to stop because this is a lot of confusion going on. I'm back and forth this way and that way. But first and foremost is going to be the gas lines. I have to put those in first in the gas tank. Figure that out, how that's going to go, you know, how that's supposed to get looped up into over here. And then from there, I can figure out exactly how I'm going to put these, uh, the subframe into this car. In the next video, I'll let y'all know more because right now I don't really have much. I am, you know, just showing y'all my steps on what I'm taking to do this and to convert it to gasoline. I have a EX uh, 96 to, I, 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 no, my, my bad. It's a 99 to 2000 EX Civic wire harness automatic. I'm going to be running that with the P20, um, the P20, the P2P ECU. That has no ABS, so I wouldn't have no need for the ABS. I don't know if I can still run with that, just having the ABS system there, or would I have to actually take it out? I don't know yet, but we'll see. If I have to come down to that road, that would let y'all know. But um, for just running it, um, that's, from my knowledge, is the wire harness, the ECU, my uh, gasoline intake manifold for a Y8. I do have that. It's either in the basement or in the car. I don't know exactly where, but I have one. And then seeing if she turns over, if I can get, well, that all button up. Still, still. I, I think it's finished now. I don't know. But, um, yeah, and then I have to just figure out exactly what relay goes to the fuel pump and actually powers it when I go to go turn the key on and actually primes it and, you know, fuels the car. So... When I figure that out, that's a lot of probe testing that probably be in the next video or whenever I get to it because I keep saying the next video and it probably might not happen in the next video. But as of right now, I'm going to close out this video here. I'm going to catch y'all on the next one. Y'all take it easy. Peace, love, engine grease. Later. <laughs>